Hello, everyone. Welcome to UGA Sports Rumors versus Facts. I am Blaine Gilmer here with Jed May, Trent Smallwood. We bring you each and every Monday night live here on the UGA Sports YouTube channel. The latest news, notes, information about Georgia football recruiting. Who knows? May have a may have a visitor or two pop in along the show. We got a lot of guys that are traveling back and, and getting settled in from a, a long weekend of uh, recruiting festivities recruiting events the scavenger hunt went on guys had a commitment today from colton heinrich a four-star tight end from the class of 2024 but first guys how are you guys doing after covering this crazy weekend of georgia football recruiting doing good uh you know we were we were on the road last week and, and saw some guys down in georgia went to a braves game friday and in between and um yeah it's you know everyone's the attention's looking towards june but things really got started uh, as far as summer recruiting festivities with the scavenger hunt weekend. Um, so big, uh, big start to the summer for sure. Absolutely. Trent. Yeah. I mean, it's always good when the Braves are beating the Dodgers, but uh, yeah, it, it was a good weekend. Uh, that the, sounds like Georgia, uh, you know, one commit coming off of it, but you know, made ground or, or, or uh, um, widened the gap uh, with several other prospects and, um, just a good overall weekend uh, leading into June. One one public commit that is. There's a there's probably some, and we know we've said many times, hey, silent commits and and kind of nods and saying, hey, I'm coming. They aren't worth anything until you go public with them, really. But there was definitely some of those that that we know about that we've been told directly about that we've been told in uh, you know roundabout ways about with different guys, and definitely some that we think are going to be coming for Georgia sooner rather than later. But Colton Heinrich was that guy that committed today, class of 2024 tied in, as I mentioned. Guys, Todd Hartley continues to recruit at just an unbelievable level. Everybody went into this weekend talking about Jaden Riddell being the one coming in that hey, there's some buzz about him going in and things like that, but it ends up being – Colton Heinrich out of Fort Lauderdale, six foot four, 230 pounds at least. I think that might be a little light for him in terms of saw him this weekend when I went over to Jefferson to cover the, the elite throwing session that took place over there. The UGA Sports was at All Buyer Lonesome for a, a good while over there and just saw Colton uh, in person, an impressive, physically imposing young man but also very talented Trent I know you probably had a chance to to watch the film I call him Jason Witten 2.0 because he wears 82 and that was his favorite player but man he, he's impressive yeah he, he's very athletic he he high points the ball and you can move him out um uh, you know he's, he's not as athletic as, as, as Brock Bowers um uh, because there's just not many guys that are on Brock Bowers level but he is he's very athletic uh for a guy his size and I, I like how uh, he, he's even used in his offense um, the way they um, play him in the slot. He runs away from linebackers and, and safeties. Uh, they run a lot of seam routes, and then uh, they can shift him outside when they get in the red zone, and uh, he can win one-on-one -on -one battles. So uh, very good pickup. Another another um, great pickup from Todd Hartley, which is not surprising. Yeah, this was – I think believe Patrick Garbin over for us put out the, the stat that, that should Heinrich go on to – sign which he says that he's shutting everything down he canceled his official visit to alabama ohio state and north carolina he's no longer taking those but patrick garbin put out that should he sign on the dotted line with georgia come december that this would be the sixth four-star tight end or higher that todd hartley has signed since the class of 2020 jed that's just uh nobody else is even scratching the surface of that right now yeah i mean simple uh you know, journalism degree math tells me that's over one per year, which, you know, there's a ton of programs out there that would kill for, you know, just two or three guys at that level um, over that kind of span. And, you know, the thing is, we all remember when uh, Landon Thomas flipped to Florida State about a month or so ago. And, and I don't think anyone was really concerned about Todd Hartley's recruiting at the time, but it's still it's it's, um, you know, it catches eyes when the number one tight end goes. But they they zeroed in on Colton Heinrich, who had been uh who was being recruited by georgia even before Atlanta. thomas flipped anyway got him there's Jaden riddell who uh, also was in town georgia's in good shape with him i mean it just uh we talk a lot about this recruiting machine in athens whatever but especially at that tight end position like it just it it 
doesn't stop. There's always another talented guy waiting in the wings. And, and Trent, you mentioned how athletic uh, Colton is. I saw one of the YouTube comments over here. Um, asked if Heinrich is a flexible tight end, does it, you know, being flexed out. I think that's just how tight ends are now, right? I mean, every tight end that you're going to get is going to have that ability to, to split out wide. And, and not everyone is going to be in the athletic mold of a Brock Bowers or a Darnell Washington. But if you're going to play in an offense like George's, you're going to have that ability to uh, spread out wide and, and play off the end of line scrimmage as well. Absolutely. We, we saw, we saw, if you go and watch his film on, on Huddle that we embedded into the commitment story today, which all the commitment stories we put out, we put those out for free. All the other insights, like our war rooms and things like that, that we've been dropping, as, uh, as Darren Franklin said here, we appreciate you, Darren, for pointing out. Been, been working hard to try to provide a lot of insight lately. And I'm telling you that, you know, you go and watch that Huddle film, Trent, and they just line him up out there. Uh, like a like a they would have X or a Z receiver out wide in the in the red zone and just throw a little fade and he just just reaches right over the guy and plucks it away from him and and catches the ball out away from his body all those things those are just things that nowadays in the red zone you have to be prepared for as a defense because these big tight ends can just match up in so many different ways. Yeah, no doubt. And then one of the other things and that I noticed, and I saw that he has a 4.2 GPA, but, uh, you know, he understands when wh where to sit down in zones. Um, you, you see him uh, a lot of passes. Uh, he's just physically imposing when he gets the ball over the middle. Um, he'll put a pounding on a safety or a, a linebacker. So, yeah, I mean, you can use him in, in different ways. I'm, I'm sure you can line him up and block him. You don't see much of that on his film, but um, uh, as big as he is and as physically imposing he is with the, with the football in his hands, I'm sure that, uh, you know, he can line up and block, which he'll be asked to do some. So uh, um, it, it's just a multiple tight end that can be used in various ways and, and including uh, the red zone, uh, the red zone thread of, of going up and catching balls over defenders. You got to spend a lot of time with Dylan Raiola on this trip and you know it was a guy that that I think those two had a pretty good bond they didn't really know each other a whole lot kind of going into this visit but Dylan spent a lot of time with him they were in the photo shoot together all that kind of stuff and it never hurts uh him you know working on Colton and and I'll, I'll just take you kind of behind the curtain a little bit here guys this is one I talked to Colton a lot going into it and he was he was pretty set of hey this is going to be you know, Georgia Alabama battle. He calls me Sunday at two o'clock and says, Hey, I need that. I need that commit edit. We're going to, we're going to go ahead and, and uh, commit to, to Georgia. Got those quotes from him. And, and Jed, you know, he just said that he could not think of a better, better place uh, with, with Todd Hartley, with, with Coach Smart, with it, the combination of, you know, the, the, the academics and the, on the field success that George's had, he just couldn't think of a better place and decided to go ahead and shut it all down. That is a drastic movement that we typically don't see that much of. So Colton Heinrich fell in love with Georgia this weekend. Yeah. I was just going to say, when you got a guy with official visits, like the ones you mentioned, typically he, he doesn't shut it all down after the first one, right? Like you'll see guys will set an official visit and commit after, but that's generally when, that's the first official visit they've taken to have them on the schedule and then say, you know what I've, I've seen all I need to see. I'm good. Um, that just tells you how much Georgia uh, crushed it within this weekend. And I mean, with four official visitors, you know, it was him, Cam, Michael, Jeremiah Smith and Casey Poe. And, you know, and four. Marcus Harrison was also there. Five, oh, yeah. Five. yeah. He, um, you know, it was a lot of quality time with uh, Todd Hartley, I'm sure, throughout throughout the week. You know, obviously Saturday there was a lot of people in town, but when you go Friday to Sunday, um, there's a, a lot of quality time there. So, you know, we say how good Georgia does with these visits, and clearly it went from a a school that looked in good shape with Heinrich to, to nailing this thing down in the span of about 48 hours. No doubt. No doubt. Uh, guys, I just cannot – express enough how impressed like i've never been i've never been at a we've went to camps before right we went to many things where there was going to be a lot of people there covering something but i showed up there at jefferson high school and here comes dylan raola here comes sammy brown <laughs> here comes uh ryan williams number one receiver in 25 class here comes Nikar, car white just one after another coming in there and 
this seeing them seeing them get led by Dylan. Dylan organized this whole thing. He's over there with every single concept and route they were getting ready to do. He would explain not only to the other quarterback that was there the progression of what. Okay, on this one we're looking we're looking uh, to the 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 the. the the corner to the post, you know, back to the deep over over here, all this kind of stuff. They were just going different, different progressions on things. And he was explaining to the receivers, hey, I want you to take this at this angle, break it at this many yards, all this kind of stuff. And just really took command. And these, and it was, it was, it wasn't in a I'm dominating type way. He also, you know, asked them for a little input of what's your favorite way to run this route and things like that. Guys, that's just something I haven't experienced in more of a, relaxed type setting like that and for a long time there we were just there kind of kind of cover it getting video of course it turned into a bigger event a little bit later on but um guys just watching the video and things like that what kind of impressions did you get uh from from kind of seeing seeing the footage that we got and then i'll kind of share at the end some of the takeaways i had yeah i mean you mentioned blaine and your um you know, one, one of your, uh, you know, uh, board posts about it. So Kobe White and Nike Carr are, are not to be overshadowed in, in this thing. Obviously, Jeremiah Smith there. And Jeremiah Smith is incredible. He, like, he's got all the physical tools. He, he's great as a receiver. But those two guys that Georgia already has on board are, are very, very talented. I saw Nike Carr at a spring game last week. He's very – he's a very quick twitch guy. Like, he's, he's going to be a slot guy in Athens is what he told me. But he makes guys miss. He he has good hands, obviously good speed. He's got a I think he ran a four four seven um, in the forty yard dash, so good speed, not necessarily a burner. But uh, and then Sakovi White as well, good route runner, explosive athlete for for the size he has. And he told me at his spring game um, last Friday he had a thirty eight inch vertical. And when you look at the combine measurements, that's more than Jackson Smith and Jigba. That's more than Jordan Addison, Zay Flowers. I mean Sakovi White. He's five nine and a half and 175 pounds, but he is pound for pound one of the better athletes that's coming in in this class. So he looks thicker than that. I'm telling you, he looks yeah. thicker than 175 pounds. Trent, I compared in our in the war, in the war room uh, that we dropped at midnight, uh, midnight Sunday night, Monday morning, however you want to view it. Um, dropped that, and I compared Sakovi White to Kiaris Jackson because it's that 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 compact explosiveness uh precision in the in the routes things like that he almost exudes a leadership a, a, a toughness about himself and then nicar i compared actually to lad mcconkey because he's so quick at the top of the route and he just he just run he just seems to run routes with almost almost reckless abandon like you see you see lad and he's able to stop on a dime too uh what do you think about those comparisons for those two guys yeah, I think they're good. I, I, I knew, you know, coming in how good Nikar uh, was, but Sokovi really impressed me. And, and just in that video alone, just, you know, not only from physical traits that you are talking about, but his route running, uh, his ability to uh, – yeah, he's got that burst, uh, the ability to go uh, downfield and catch the ball. And, of course, uh, having Dylan Raul throw you the ball, he's throwing it uh, 60 yards or whatever in there. I mean, he, he's launching that ball, but – uh, so Kobe really impressed me uh, going back and watching that video and, and, and his ability to get downfield and make catches and, and just his overall build and, and burst um, at the wide receiver position. Jed, we, you've, you've talked to Ryan Williams, the number one receiver in 2025 class. I've talked to Ryan Williams a good bit as well. This is a guy who definitely – I mean, he's, he's still committed to Alabama, but he is definitely uh, – in talks with Dylan Raiola regularly, and he is – Georgia has his attention after this weekend. The main thing I saw in that throwing session was those two may have had the most fun out there throwing with one another. It seemed like he just constantly had a smile on his face, was was happy to be there kind of around all that talent, and a ball did not drop between those two in every rep that they had. So – instant rapport between those two connection and, and throwing with each other still he's, a, he's an Alabama guy he's at Sarah Lane High School Jed but you got to feel that Georgia uh, made a little bit of movement this weekend with Ryan Williams yeah he told me and he told um, Adam Gorney as well you know the Dylan Riola commitment definitely plays a part for him which is to be expected as a receiver but 
you know, it almost reminded me a little Blaine. Remember that summer of 2022 and there was that big first official visit weekend who's lurking in those pictures, but Troy Bowles, who obviously 23 yeah. linebacker or whatever. And I, it almost makes me think when we look down the road, look back on this throwing session, how big this might've been for a guy one class below, you know, most of the guys that were there and Ryan Williams. And he said, and listen, throughout the day, Saturday, the scavenger hunt, who was on his team, but Sokovi, uh, Sokovi White, he's a great guy to be around. And he, it sounds like from talking to Ryan, the recruiting pitches are there, but it's not in a super overbearing way. It's a, it's almost like they're letting him figure things out for himself while keeping in his ear, whether it's Sokovi, whether it's uh, Dylan Raiola, Nikar, I'm sure as well. So um, yeah, it's when you look at it, I actually did this when I was, um, you know, looking at something the other day, Georgia has never signed the number one receiver. The guy that ends up as the number one guy, in the rivals rankings. And now when you look at Jeremiah Smith and Ryan Williams, I'm not saying Georgia leads for both of those guys, but there's a very realistic chance that it, it could happen back to back years. If, if Georgia were to end up flipping Jeremiah Smith and, and Ryan Williams. So um, Brian McClendon is definitely, this is kind of what we saw coming when Georgia hired Brian McClendon. It's, it's, it's really kicking into gear with this, with this 2024 cycle right now. Yeah. That's a good segue into Jeremiah Smith as well. Six foot three, 198 pounds is what he's listed at. But I'm just telling you, seeing him in, in person, he is physically impressive. Uh, Sammy Brown was quoted in a story with Adam Gorney just seeing he saw, you know, he saw Jeremiah there and he said, My goodness, he's just long. Like, like it just, he's a long human being. He's got, he's got, you know, long arms. He's a long strider. He's a guy who easily, easily covers covers ground. And I'm just telling you that um, he's the type of guy I put in the in the war room that can be a wide receiver one close to day one when he gets on campus. As long as he can, you know, make sure he knows the nuances of the playbook, Trent, he has the type of ability to be immediate impact like a George Pickens. Uh, you know, like a Julio Jones, like those type of guys, that's what kind of receiver you're talking about in a Jeremiah Smith. Yeah, definitely. And and like you said, Georgia hasn't been able to land that receiver besides Pickens uh, probably since A.J. Green. Um, that, that I guess they thought Marlon Brown might be that guy, but um, that never materialized uh, like I thought. But, yeah, he, he's definitely uh, that has all the traits to come in and be – the number one guy or number one receiver from day one. Um, it'd be interesting to see uh, committed to Ohio State and uh, st- you know, like we we talk about, as long as he's committed, um, it you know th- things haven't changed yet. But I know Georgia did push that needle a little bit this weekend, and Dylan Raul is a big uh, big reason why. There's there's comments everywhere from Smith talking about how much he now has to consider Georgia because of Dylan Raul. How you know, he doesn't want to put out – in fact, he was telling me at the thing, you know, he doesn't want a bunch of added attention with this. Uh, when I saw him this weekend and that, you know, none, none of this is really going to be decided until it comes down to, you know, when the pen goes to paper. So you could you could legitimately see this Jeremiah Smith thing end up being – very much so in the same mold as a Travis Hunter type deal. Like we don't know, even though he's committed and everybody thought Travis Hunter was locked in with Florida State, who knows? Uh, th- this thing may, you know, Florida's trying to get involved here, which that would be the shock of all shocks if, uh, you know, he went and joined that dumpster fire that, in Gainesville. Um, but what is it? <laughs> I was going to say one more wrinkle. You talk about it going all the way to the end. Another wrinkle is – the situation with with uh, Brian, or not situation, but if Brian Hartline were to leave for a college head coaching job or, or an NFL coordinator job, whatever, that would be the timeline between, say, December 1st and December 20th or whenever signing day is. That three weeks is when a lot of those rumblings would be going on, reports coming out, you know, depending on where Ohio State is, whether they're in the playoff or whatever. So, it, that's when things could really get interesting is if stuff starts happening with Brian Hartline up there at Ohio State. Yeah, I mean, it, it, there, there's – people forget that here we are, and uh, this this official visit for Jeremiah Smith occurred 
May 19th through 21st, but there's a long time till till December. And I think the big date you need to look at is November 25th. Why? That's when Ohio State plays Michigan again. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, let Ohio State go to Michigan and lose to them for the third straight time. Let that happen, and we'll see. We'll see what what how Buckeye Land is starting to feel about things. So it's gonna be it's gonna be quite interesting. Uh, there's a there's a long way to go. Georgia set the bar. I was told uh, by sources there at the at the visit that on multiple occasions, Jeremiah Smith and his family said that Athens felt more like home. Quote unquote, felt more like home. So we'll see how that. How that transpires and goes throughout. Um, guys, we also need to talk about the linemen that were there. Casey Poe takes a visit. Well, up uh, before we take handle the linemen, we got another receiver, one that we just talked about is going to join in here with us. Sakovi White. Sakovi, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. Absolutely, absolutely. We were just talking about that, the throwing event, the little throwing session that that went from a Kind of a small gathering there to a uh, to a big event there pretty quick with all that talent uh, loaded up there. What was it like just getting to throw with your, the, you know, one of your future quarterbacks there in Dylan Raiola? Uh, let me know that we're going to have a lot of throwing power when we get there, and uh, it'll be easier for him to get us the ball. Absolutely. So you were really successful. You were having a lot of fun, it seemed like, with uh, Ryan Williams. I was telling Jed and Trent, Ryan seemed to be just smiling the entire weekend. It seemed like they, the young the young cat was having a lot of fun with you you older guys there. Yeah, he's a cool person. Um, he always smiles, jokes, likes to have fun, very athletic. Um, so far, I can see he can do anything. So, I mean, hopefully we can get him away from Bama. Yeah, you, you and Nikar – we're there, uh, you know, the whole time kind of kind of uh, chopping it up together, you know, talking about different routes and, and things like that when you were when you were running that. How cool was it to be there with a wide receiver that was, is already committed to Georgia just like you are? Uh, it lets me know that I'm not doing it by myself, you know, and um, he's in the same grade as me, so we'll be taking on doing it together. Uh, we'll be there for three to four years, and hopefully – we can continue to uh, help each other and be better, you know, make each other better. Absolutely. Uh, Jed, Trent, y'all got anything? Yeah, Sokovi, um, you know, I was at the uh, the spring game uh, last last Friday, and you were saying that mm-hmm. what Coach McClendon is telling y'all is, hey, y'all need to come in and be ready to roll uh, day one, ready to make an impact. Just what, what are the preparations going to look like for you, for Nye, uh, for Nitro Tuggle, y'all, as as you look to come in next January and be ready to uh, to make an impact day one? Uh, I think it, we just got to be ready to play and step up and uh, fill in some big shoes when those receivers that are there right now leave and go to the NFL, hopefully. And um, we just got to be ready to make big plays and help the team the best way we can. So for for those of us who weren't there, you got to do the scavenger hunt. It was Ryan Williams told me y'all were Team Hollywood. So take us through yeah. Take us through the day. What all did you do? Where did you find uh, Coach Kirby? What was the favorite thing? You know, give everybody a rundown of what that scavenger hunt is like for someone who was in it. Well, we seen Coach Smart in the uh, the practice field in the indoor. He they low key cheated. They didn't seem low key cheated because they took the picture before the game started and then didn't post it until after the game started. So they cheated. So we really won. Nice. But, um, it was just uh, us driving around campus with the coaches and um, having fun, doing a lot of different events. Um, And I guess it was just building a bond with our teammates, our future teammates, mostly. We got to jump in the gymnastics team. Uh, Well, I didn't jump in it because I didn't feel like getting stuck, but Ryan did. And then uh, we just did a lot of different things. Uh, We played with water. Kind of hard to remember because there was a lot of a lot of things. I heard there was a, a I heard there was a karaoke set up. Did the receivers get in on that? Yeah, we there was a karaoke. They sung um I think the song was called Baby Shark. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, Ryan picked that song, and I was just standing there looking at him like, bro. I didn't. You said him, Ryan picked it. Back there. Yeah, Ryan did. Well, he is the youngest one. Makes sense. You yeah. know, he's he's closer to that age. Now, uh, Trent, you got, you got there's a Kobe. Yeah. Was there? I said, I said, what do you think about uh, the new com- newest commit today, uh, Colton Heinrich? 
Um, I seen him run routes with us. I think uh, I didn't really know who he was. I thought he's really, really big. I didn't know. I thought he was already at Georgia, and I thought because he came in with a whole bunch of Georgia gear on, and I thought he was already dead. I was like, okay, so some of the football players are running routes with us, but I was. They was like, no, he's still in high school, and I was like, okay, yeah, he's really, really big. So, um, that tight end spot is gonna be really, really nice when we when he gets there, and um, I think he's gonna fill his shoes in when Brock leaves, and he's just another Brock, and for us. And I feel like uh, we're not really going to miss anything when we come in. This is going to be um, same players, just different people. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Now, when you're talking about Jeremiah Smith, you guys, uh, we saw. I, I I didn't see you upload any pictures to to Instagram, but I saw yeah. Nikar and Dylan and uh, Jeremiah kind of pictured in some trios together. Did mm-hmm. you get in on the photo shoot action with uh, Jeremiah and Dylan? You're trying to persuade him flip him to the dogs no actually i didn't they stayed overnight they stayed the weekend there because they live so far i leave i live probably like an hour and 45 so i went up there that day and then went back home that same day um but uh as in jeremiah i mean i talked to him but he's really not i mean i talked to dylan about him he's really not he doesn't talk much uh he said you get a warm like he got a warm up to you so i figured that i know he's just he's a quiet person um but I heard a little squeak out of him when he caught when he tried to when he tried to catch the ball. So at least we at least we heard that. At least we heard that. Unless you know he's not a too quiet person. So um and I think we can get him. Dylan is re- trying really, really hard to get him. And if we get him, it'll be raps for everybody. Yeah, that I think they, they, it's talented over. player. Yeah. So, so what is kind of when is your your OV is the June 9th through eleventh, right? Mm-hmm. So yes, what are you what are you looking at? You got some guys, a guy that you I don't know if you spent time with him on the scavenger hunt, but KJ Bolden uh, is gonna be around. Sammy Brown, a guy that I know you mm-hmm. were around, of course, at the at the throwing event. He was he was there, kind of helped schedule it and stuff like that. What's gonna be kind of your 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 goal to your pitch to those two to try to land them as Georgia Bulldogs? Just making sure they have a fun time, you know. Just making sure they have a good time and uh that's really what it's about, just making sure they have a fun time and showing them that this is where home is it and that we have their back and that no matter what happens, we're just going to be unhappy with whatever decision they make. But we hope the right decision is uh, Georgia. What what do you think about Sammy's uh, receiver skills? I mean, linebacker out there trying to go out and, uh, out and get it a little bit. Yeah, he did that. I, I, knew, he, I knew he could do that because uh, when we played him in our playoff game, he – Went over the top and caught the ball. Went over over one of our players, and I was just like, "Yeah, he's different. Like he's a different breed." So I know he's a little Trent, J- Trent, Jed, you got anything for Sakovi? You know, I was just gonna say over here. You know, we got a question. Uh, what does Sakovi think about the facilities? I know you kind of seen how these facilities at at Georgia have, have opened and developed over the past year or two. Just how do you describe what those facilities are like as someone who you know it's going to be your home? Uh, you know, in the next year or so. Amazing, their 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 electronics there is are really really crazy. They're out of this world. You know, as you transition from high school to college, they have a lot more money and uh, they can do a lot more different things. And I won't be sore as much because we got uh, rehab. You know, um, you know, the trainers, and I can come in and do a lot of different things to help my body and my legs. And stuff like that. And if I need to go sit in somewhere and just chill, I can do that. So, um, if it, the facilities are amazing. Absolutely. You started to see uh, over the past couple of years the, the wide receiver room kind of transition at Georgia, um, getting more athletic, getting more speed. What is it about uh, Brian McClendon, Mike, Mike Bobo? What, what are they telling telling y'all about the offense? And, and that, you know, it, they're getting more explosive in the passing game, it looks like, uh, you know, these past couple of years. Uh, I think they just – they want playmakers. That's really what it's about. Um, people that they feel that can make plays on the field and make the team better um, anyway. And they're not just getting a player that can play one position. They're, as I can see – my car can play the slot. He can be in the backfield for like a jet sweep or something. And I can do a lot of different things by being a returner. Um, if I need to, I can go to defense. I can do a lot of different things. So they're just getting players who can do different things and I can just play one position. 
Hey, great stuff. Great stuff, Sokovi. We know that you've been going a lot. You've had a lot of things going on. Even had a little birthday celebration you had earlier. So happy birthday to that uh, member of your family, your little brother and everything. And we appreciate you making time to come on with us, Georgia Commit. Sokovi White, appreciate you, man. Appreciate it. Absolutely. That was Sokovi White joining us here. And, hey, it's always great having him on to to talk uh, about the Class 2024. He's joined us before guys what were your takeaways from some of the stuff uh Sokovi was saying there if Sokovi White's calling you a quiet guy then Jeremiah Smith must be really quiet because uh, Sokovi is a pretty quiet guy um in his own right but no um you know I just think it's it's hearing him talk about the scavenger hunt is, is interesting because talking to some guys this weekend a couple of different guys said it, the event was really cool it was the most creative thing they've done on a college campus and I think you know, for a lot of these guys, especially the the highly recruited types that Georgia goes after, the the visits can get a little repetitive when it's, you come in, you eat, you watch film with the coaches, you do this and this and this. I think the scavenger hunt is it, it, just a great way to mix things up and have fun and, and let it be different. And, and yeah, there's there ends up being um, some film at the end. You know, Joseph Jonah Ajanye from Texas told me he went over film with Trey Scott, but um, it, it, it's a good way to mix things up and it. it Let's there's bonds built between commits and commits between commits and targets, uh, the coaches and all these guys. It's a it's a very unique event. And you see, you know, Dan Lanning had one in Oregon uh, this weekend as well. It's it's a great event. It's it's imagine good, that. It's a good way to um, you know kind of break the monotony of this, especially for guys like Wayne. You mentioned KJ Bolden was there. How many times has KJ Bolden come to Georgia and sat down with the defensive coaches and? seeing the facilities and, and all this kind of stuff. So it's a good way to mix things up from the monotony of recruiting it. And, and it makes an impact on these guys. Every, everyone we talk to says how, how cool it is, how fun it is, and just how, how different it makes Georgia in the recruiting landscape. No doubt. We had a thing in here that says Fal- uh, Falcons fan 1020 said, Jim, I didn't say a word. It doesn't give me much faith in the flip. Well, so Kobe didn't say he didn't say a word all weekend to – he said he said it didn't say a word all weekend really to him that much. He's kind of quiet to Dylan Raoli. He was pretty much talking with the entire weekend and also uh, a lot with Kirby Smart and Brian McClendon there. Um, Trent, before we get to questions, any observations you had from what uh, Sokovi had to say there? Yeah, I just think it's interesting how, the, you know, the camaraderie built between players and prospects – uh, they, they might not live close to each other. They might live in different states. They might live across the country, but how much camaraderie these guys got, uh, you know, when they come in, they're already uh, knowing each other, knowing, uh, you know, what each other likes, their favorite things. I think that's why uh, this team as a whole is working out so well is it's not only the group chat, just, just the, the bond these guys have when they come in um, it, that, you know, they, they don't play against each other. They, but it seems like these guys talk all the time and they, they, in a group chat, but not only the group chat is they're, they're planning um, throwing sessions with, with players that are all over the country. And I think that's how you build the bond that, that, you know, the Kirby has been able to build that bond uh, in Athens and sustain it. And, and I think that's where you, you've seen uh, Georgia flo- uh, flourish over the past couple of years. And Jed, we, we had heard about this throwing event, 10, 12 days before, and it was totally player initiated with it, with Dylan and Sammy kind of getting together and, and planning this thing out. Of course, Sammy with the access to Jefferson's practice field there and all that kind of stuff. So um, it does go a long way, as Trent said, with the relationships are being built and stuff like that. So uh, an interesting, an interesting dynamic, but that had been in the works for a while, Jed. Yeah, I mean, the first – I mentioned going to Kobe White spring game. He told me about it then, and that was over a week out from it. And it's it's getting all those guys – Trent, you mentioned these guys live all over the country, starting obviously with Dylan Riola in Arizona. So it's it takes a lot of moving parts to pull something like this off, but the, the impact it can have – down the line is is just huge when you're talking about a guy like ryan williams or jeremiah smith i mean it's it's huge um and these guys they build bonds i mean i was when i talked with sakobi he's like you know nitro tuggle is the funniest one and malachi tolliver is the one that talks too much like these guys are already really close it seems like and they're not going to be on campus for another i guess six seven months no doubt no doubt uh now let's get into our vault questions here 
Jed, we got one from Big Fatty 94 to start it off with. You have how many solid commits by July 1st, more offense or defense? Well, July 1st may be a tricky date because <laughs> I think there's some of them are going to wait till a little bit later in that first week mm -hmm. uh, into, into July. But I get the premise here. Trent, we know that you're real high on that number. Uh, the, the, you, you, you were, August you were, yeah, you said August 1st. So this would be, this would be pushing it a little bit sooner. We're at 14 in Georgia's class right now uh, with the addition of, of Drew Miller recently, the punter and Colton Heinrich today. I would say I would go be conservative and say that you're going to add four maybe four four to five more before july 1st what are you guys thoughts well i feel good about my 20 number at august 1st if you're going four to five by july 1st but, well uh, i'm just saying i think that the, like i'm going to extend it past the it passed into the first week of july because i think there's two guys in the first week of july that could make that could make decisions and we know that sammy brown and, and kj bolden have told us that they plan to they plan to commit around that time, um, you know, to a school of their choice. And we know that Sammy Sammy's is kind of Georgia Clemson. You know, you got Ohio State, Oklahoma, Tennessee trying to fight to get in there, but really more uh, Georgia Clemson head to head. And then you got KJ Georgia and Ohio State fighting with with like Alabama and Florida State and people like that trying to get in involved in things. So I mean, those are two ones right there. Jaden Riddell is is one that you got to fill Georgia's in really good position with, and that's just three right there, Trent. So that that's three that are really high profile and out there. So I would imagine a couple more wouldn't be a stretch. Yeah, I think um, looking at fourteen right now, eighteen by you know first week of July. I do think I do think we'll hit that. That's that's big right there. Um, <laughs> Darren Franklin with a thirty dollars two percent. That is greatly appreciated. Uh, that that means a lot. That we we appreciate that, Darren. That uh, Darren's been highly complimentary, and we appreciate you guys tuning in with us. If you want to throw a super chat and and put a question in, we will make sure we get to it. That is highly appreciated, Darren. You're a gentleman and a scholar, sir. But anyways, uh, Trent, go ahead. But yeah, I think I think 18 by the first week of July. I think 20 uh, is the number that I've had by August 1st. So I, I think I'll stick with that number. There's a, there's a lot of guys. Uh, that'll come off the board uh, even more in July. So uh, I still say it's 20 by July, uh, August 1st, 18 or so by the first week of July. No doubt, no doubt. Jed, what's your opinion? Yeah, I think that's a good number. I mean, there's the guys y'all mentioned. There's a Cam Michael who who we didn't talk about. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's like you said, Blaine, there's a lot of – like July 1st is tough, but when you look at, say, July 8th, that's when I think that's a week where you could see um, a lot of movement. Because, I mean, Sammy Brown has said numerous times, I am ready to get this recruiting stuff over with. Like, he, he is ready to be done with it. So, um, I don't think it's, there's not going to be, like, a ton of movement because I just think guys are going to want to take their officials at that point. But, yeah, I would say four, I think, is a good number. Like, if you gave me three and a half, I'd take the over. Um, but But we'll see. Um, there's obviously no super certainties or anything, but I think there's no real dates set on those guys um, in the first week of July, but there's, there's guys that could, um, you know, come up at any time. So. All right. Uh, let's hit the, the next question. I'm actually texting with somebody who may join us here. So go ahead and read that next one, uh, Jed. Yeah. While Blaine's talking to the important people, if you had to guess on the next commitment to go public, who would you pick? How do you see this running back class finishing? Go ahead, Trent. Uh, I would say Riddell, you know, Michael. There's a couple of guys that could that could go next. Um, as far as the running back class, I think you got to look at uh, Christian Clark as as one. Um, you know, that it, this could go various ways. You know, that they had uh, Chauncey Bowens uh, on campus. Um, you know, we have a, we have an article at UGA Sports or an update that they kind of Georgia is is really in the mix there. And if he if he was to choose to flip, Georgia's in a good spot. Uh, you know, th th there's there's a couple guys that that, that Georgia's, but I think running back is the interesting. But other than offensive line, I think 
uh, running back is the probably the biggest question mark of what uh, two more guys that Georgia adds. And I think that's the plan to add two more guys. But it, I think that's the, the big question mark because they have several guys uh, that are, are quality guys they can pick from. Speaking of offensive line, Mr. Casey Poe joining live on Rumors versus Facts. Casey, just coming off that official visit, man, and we know that – uh, we know that you had a lot going on. We appreciate you taking a little time to to join us here. Yeah, no problem. Absolutely. So the floor is yours, my friend. Go ahead and uh, tell us what – hey, us three, we never got to experience a D1 official visit in terms of uh, college football or anything. So go ahead and uh, fill us in on what the weekend in Athens, Georgia was like. Yeah, it was a great time. You know, um, it's one of those things where – Someone else gets to pay for you to come down and get to pay for your meals, pay for your flight and everything. So that in itself is a great thing. That that I mean, as a big man, that's appreciated. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, but once you get down there, it was a great time. You know, uh, they get you your own hotel room. They really wine you and dine you nice. I can't remember if there was a night or even a meal where I didn't have steak. I was having steak for breakfast, which is something that is unheard of to me. But it was a great time. We get to do the uh, – the scavenger hunt where we look for Coach Smart. And, you know, I'm a competitor. I like to go out and compete. The whole line in it, but we got close. Uh, the quarterbacks won it. I think they cheated. I think Dylan did something to cheat. I don't know what he did, but he cheated in some way. But uh, it was a great time overall. You know, got to go hang out with players, got to meet the coaches, got to go to Coach Smart's house. And uh, it was just a whole big time. And we definitely made the most of it. Yeah, uh, you see my, our guy Andy Stowe here, Casey. He wants to know how big is he. He looks like a wall right there. So Casey, Casey, you big dude. Uh, tell him the measurements right here. What'd you What'd you uh, measure in at Georgia this weekend? Yeah, I think I was. Uh, they had me at like six four and a half and two ninety. I think I think those were around the measurements. Yeah, what you got for Casey? Yeah. Um... What what is it like when there's there's a lot of Georgia commits there? Whether it's Dylan, Sakovi, Nikar, um, you know all these guys. What's it like being recruited by them? And how is being recruited by, you know, a guy your age maybe different than how Coach Cyril's, Coach Smart, those kind of guys recruit you? Yeah, so um, being recruited by somebody my age is kind of weird because like. I'll be playing for them one day, but also they're kind of doing the job of a coach. So it's kind of a two part role for them, but it's great. I mean, you know, it's the same thing going on in Auburn with Walker White. He's a, he's a huge guy that uh, tries to pull commits for them. And then um, just everywhere, you'll get that everywhere you go, but it just makes it to where, yeah, you're getting recruited and you're getting talked to by these kids that are trying to get you to come, but you're also like building friendship. Like it's, it's pure. It's just, we get to talk and get to know each other. So that if I do go there, we already have that build, that friendship and that relationship built off. And also I can trust them a little more. Like if I already know coming into it, who I'm going to be playing with, I'm going to trust them a lot more than if I'm just going in cold and hoping the class I'm going in with is pretty good. No doubt. Yeah. I, I have two questions for you. Uh, one of them is, you know, landing that landing a number one quarterback, number one player in the country and Dylan Raul, how, how big of an impact does that play for an offensive lineman like yourself? Yeah, that's huge. I mean, the trust between the offensive lineman and his quarterback is like no other. Like the offensive, or the quarterback we have here, at Lindell, Clint Thurman, that kid can sling the rock. He can run it, and I know no matter what, like any situation we go into, he's gonna put his head down. He's gonna get the job done because that's just the type of guy he is. And so that makes me have ultimate trust because usually an offensive lineman, you know, we worry about kind of the run game and keeping the quarterback safe whenever. You have somebody behind you that you can trust. It takes it into where, yeah, we're still controlling the run game, but whenever it's a pass, I'm not just protecting them. I'm, I'm, I'm keeping him safe because I know he's about to throw it downfield. If I give him time, he's gonna make stuff happen, or he's gonna use those legs. And I gotta be looking upfield to go try to block for him. So, just kind of knowing that there's a there's a really smart and a really good kid behind you, it gives the offense a lot of comfort, and uh, I think it helps us to play better too. That's a it's a great leadership that we have behind us, and it's a it's a trust thing. So what what is the pitch by Stacy Searles? Uh, what you know? What is he? Was he telling you? What does he want you to come in and and, and do? What would he like for you to? Uh, um, what what is he just telling you as a whole? Yeah, I mean it's the same pitch everyone hears from Georgia. It's uh it's back to back national championship. It's the best of the best. You know, um, it's guys that are battling each and every day that are the, that they're the best in college football. They're going up against 
you know, a first round draft pick number one in the draft is going to go be playing against the first round draft pick number three in the draft. You know, they're just, they're battling it out every day in practice. But, uh, as far as what he wants me to come in and do is just compete. Just, you know, he wants to build the best offensive lineman to ever come through college football. And to do that, you got to have guys that are willing to compete, willing to go beat out some other people from some spots. And, uh, you know, it's pretty obvious. Everyone wants to play young. Everyone wants to play as a freshman. But uh, sometimes that just doesn't happen. Like, you can't just – sometimes you can't just come in and play right off the bat because there's great guys ahead of you. But if you can go in and fight for that spot and learn, learn from those guys in that second, second half to third year, you're you're a lot better position than where you came in with. Casey, let me just go ahead and tell you, if you do end up going to Georgia, Kirby Smart is going to put you out in front of the media a lot. He picks the players that go out there. I'm just telling you, go ahead and get ready for that. You're going to be throwing that polo on after practice and going out and talking to guys like us because you're very well-spoken, man, and doing a great job. wanted to ask you real quick about your plans from here on through the rest of the summer. Like, I know you've got some other official visits uh, lined up. Just kind of give everybody a pulse of what your recruitment looks like here over the next couple months. Yeah, so I got I got a busy June going in. I got all my all my June booked up. I have Clemson coming up on June the 2nd, and then from there I'm going Texas Tech, Auburn, to Alabama, into that kind of break period. Um, throughout July, I really don't have anything big planned as of now. I'm not really taking any visits anywhere. I'm going to try to – Try to, you know, stay home with the family and kind of enjoy my last summer as a kid. But then going back into August, we're starting right back up. I have uh, Oklahoma and LSU lined up for August. But um, it's going to be a whirlwind. Somewhere in these next couple months, I'd like to, you know, decide where home is and get kind of locked in there. So, one, I can come back and focus on Lindell because, I mean, we got a we got a big season. We got a lot to prove down here. But also so I can do those things y'all are talking about and go out and recruit other offensive linemen for whatever school that I do choose to go play for. So uh, that's kind of what I'm thinking. That's what my timeline is hopefully going to look like. But, uh, you know, stuff changes. So we'll just have to see how it goes. Stacey Searles is trying to bring in five, potentially six, really quality offensive linemen in this class because Georgia's probably going to lose three guys to the NFL after this season um, from from their off, starting offensive line this year. What was kind of uh, what was kind of the the talks about that about hey here's what we're looking for out of this class as a whole from Stacy Searles? Yeah, I mean he mentioned that he mentioned the three guys leaving. I I got to hang out with one of them. Uh, Tate was kind of my my handler, my host, I guess you could say. So I got to hang out with him a lot. But uh, the big thing coming out of it and just what he was telling there was two offensive linemen there. There was me and Marcus. What he was telling us like he's trying to build a great class. Like he knows people are leaving. He's not scared because he knows what his his depth chart looks like. But uh, every year it's his goal to, you know, make the best offensive lineman, get kids to come in and compete and get the best of the best so he can just keep restocking and keep having having competition in that depth chart so no one can ever get comfortable. But uh, as far as the expectations from him, he expects it to be the best offensive line class that Georgia's brought in and then keep building on top of it. Last one from me, and then I'll see if Jed and Trent have anything from you. Georgia got the first official visit. You said there's several more coming up. Some people view it as an advantage to Georgia to get to set the bar. Some people view it as a negative because that 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 feeling about Georgia may fade away towards the end of these visits. What do you say about that one way or the other? Yeah, so um, as far as how I lined out my official visits, it was really just whoever, you know, called me up first. I knew kind of my top seven, top eight schools going into it that I would like to take officials to. But it was first come, first serve. If somebody asked for a date and it was open, I was giving it to them. But um, as far as where Georgia fell, I think it was a good thing. They set the VAR very, very high for themselves. You know, they, they set a lot of great expectations. And um, going forward, I, I think it's good for them because I'll be able to base other schools off of them instead of, you know, basing them off of other schools. It, it, it gives them a uh, kind of a co- competitive advantage because I know what other schools have to be. No doubt, no doubt. Hey, you guys got anything for Casey? He's been gracious with his time here for, with us. Yeah, I just got one. You hear so much about, you know, the culture and relationships, I guess specifically within an offensive line, right? That's one of the closest position groups on a team. How much did you, were you able to see some of that within the Georgia offensive line group uh, while yeah. you're in town, their relationships with Coach Cyril's or, or between themselves? Yeah, that was something I was actually very pleasantly surprised by because I've always heard, you know, Georgia – 
kind of the Georgia and Alabamas and, you know, kind of Michigans and Ohio States of the world, they're just like a machine. Like they, they get, they get their work done. They get in, they get out. They don't really like build relationships with each other. And that's just not true. At least not at Georgia. I was able to hang out with some of the players and just see the bond they have. And then the bond they have with coach Searles. I think coach Searles went down and went fishing with uh, Bobo the other day, a couple of like 30 <laughs> minutes from the, from the campus. So it's like, I mean, they're winning back-to-back national championships. And they're also building great relationships with each other that'll go on, you know, throughout their lifetime. So that was that that very pleasantly surprised me. No doubt, Trent. You got anything to wrap it up with here? I know. I know you're a big dude. Uh, you, you're, uh, you know, our our, our, uh, our watchers have already uh, seen that. Do you kind of model your game after anybody in particular? I know office line. They might not do that. Uh, that might be more skill set. But is there anybody in particular you model your game after? I really don't specifically. I don't have, like, one guy who I try to play like. I just kind of – like, if I turn on the TV and I have, um, you know, like, say, say the 49ers, for example, their left tackle this past year, um, his feet work were amazing on his pass sides, and it felt like he was, like, gliding all over the field whenever he was playing. And so I just – I'll see that. And I'll be like, okay, well, that's good. Let's start trying to work on my footwork, or I'll see – you know, the uh, the center for the Eagles, how he, he'll get out on those uh, pools. He's kind of Kelsey. a smaller – yeah, Kelsey, thank you. He's kind of a smaller guy, but he still gets out and hits the crap out of people and knocks their socks off. It's like, all right, how is he playing? So it's just taking bits and pieces from everybody's game and kind of trying to put them together into one great offensive lineman. One guy from our audience says, if you want to keep beating State, Casey, you better commit now. That's, that's what he's telling you. <laughs> with, with Georgia. So that's, that's his pitch on the internet here. But, Casey, you've been gracious with your time. We appreciate you coming on, and we look forward to uh, covering the rest of uh, your recruitment going forward. Good luck with everything this summer, man. Absolutely. I appreciate y'all. All right. Thank you, Casey. We'll, we'll catch you later. That was Casey Poe, who was on here after his official visit to Georgia very thankful for him coming on. Guys, what were your takeaways from that interview? Very, you know, you see it in the comments over here. Very, you know, personable, talkative, mature guy. Blaine, you said he was going to be in front of the media a lot if he comes to Georgia. You're right. Um, but, yeah, and I think it's interesting hearing about the relationships with the offensive line that he was talking about. And it's interesting that the perception was that that doesn't really happen at, at the bigger programs. Guys just come in and, you know, get in and get out when it comes to work and stuff. Um, that was interesting to hear him say that was the perception. And it was also interesting to hear him say that, um, that Georgia kind of disproved it a little bit with, with relationships among the players and with coach Cheryl's as well. So that's definitely a point in your, in uh, Georgia's favor. And uh, we'll just see how it goes. He's definitely got a long way to go when he's talking about official visits all through June and into August. But um, Georgia, like they have with a lot of guys, in the past couple of classes, they they got the first one, and we'll uh, we'll see if it works out for them. Trent, yeah, yeah, we talk about uh, Dylan Raul and Nikar and these guys uh, being recruiters. This is a guy that you want on your side, just from uh, he could be very, uh, you can tell you'd be very persuasive uh, from from a, in a recruiting standpoint. He's also a guy that you can get on campus and you can host other recruits just from his uh, maturity and. Um, just the way he talks and, and you know his attitude and stuff. So, uh, very respectful and and smart young man. And um, it, you know I, I think Georgia would, would be getting an all around uh, good guy, good football player uh, as well uh, if Georgia they land him. Absolutely, guys. We got a lot of you in here. Do us a favor, hit that thumbs up. We really appreciate it. It helps us out. Just hit that thumbs up. We've had. Uh, two interviews, so I don't know that we're going to get to all the questions on here. Um, if we don't, Jed and I will go back through. Jed, remind me tomorrow. We'll go back through and we'll answer them in the thread on the vault. Um, but let's try to let's try to kind of cherry pick some here uh, real quick. Medical dog asks, "Has Sammy Brown moved that tree yet?" I don't know. It. His, he said his dad uh, was going to have him move it today so we'll see apparently there were a couple of downed trees over there and that was one reason he wasn't going scavenger hunt but sammy kind of slipped away went to the georgia baseball game with his uh, girlfriend but didn't go on the scavenger hunt so you know kids these days who knows what what happens there but he'll i'm sure he ended up moving that tree at some some point or as mike brown his father told me i gotta get his big butt moving that tree <laughs> over there so sammy's a big dude big dude for sure 
Um, let's see, guys. We, we Speaking of offensive line, I know we had one here on those guys. Let me find it real quick. Uh, let's go defensive line first. Mad Dog, 65-68. Do you think we, Georgia, get these offensive linemen, Justin Scott, Justin Green, Aiden Breeland, uh, and is there an update with uh, Ajanye? If not, guys, real quick, what are your opinions on those three and kind of Georgia standing with them right now? Yeah, Justin Scott, I mean, we've, I think this is the third or fourth week in a row we've had a question on him, and it's like Georgia's kind of in a holding pattern until he gets actually gets on campus for that official the first uh, weekend in June. I know I've seen a lot of stuff about uh, Miami and Justin Scott on Twitter recently, so we'll see what kind of impression Georgia tries to make uh, on the official. I know out of the three listed, Trent, I think you'd agree, Georgia's probably got the best shot with Justin Green as of right now, you know, in-state kid. Uh, Aiden Breland is a guy that uh, Georgia's in on as well. Blaine, I think you reported that he's taking an official visit to Georgia in June. And then with Joseph Jonah Ajanye, you know, Georgia offered him, I believe, a couple months ago, and it was kind of an under-the-radar thing. And he shows up this weekend with Justin Williams, his high school teammate. And, and Georgia, he called Georgia his dream school when they offered. And I asked him, hey, how did it, How did you first visit to your dream school stack? I said, it was better than I expected. And something interesting he talked about with me was – he watched film with Trey Scott and he's basically said he, Trey Scott basically blew his mind and, and taught him some things that he, he had never even considered. So the quote he gave me was something along the lines of, you know, imagine how good I could be if I was coached by that guy for three to four years. So uh, Tr- Georgia's obviously got that defensive line development pitch with, with what they've done over the past three or four years. And that certainly made an impression on uh, Jonah John. So Georgia and Oklahoma have, have kind of, separated themselves a little bit. He's coming back for an official visit, I believe, June. 23rd through the 25th. 23rd through 25th, yep. So and Justin um, Williams will crazy. probably come that weekend as well because they're, they're teammates. And Justin told me – I'm going to have a story out on him tomorrow. Justin told me that uh, – of course, he's an inside linebacker, but he told me that one of those last two weekends in June will be his official visit. So I would assume since his teammate did the 23rd through 25th, that he would do the same. Trent, what's your opinion on these three defensive linemen? Yeah, like Jed said, we're in a we're in a holding pattern for Justin Scott. I think when Justin Green, I think Georgia sits in a good position there. He wants to stay close to home. Um, he, he he likes Georgia's defense. He's been able to build a good relationship with um, with with Georgia staff. So I think Georgia sits in a good position there. And the one guy that I, it, when I talked to him, who he was talking with the most on the trail, it was Aiden Breland, surprisingly. So, so talking about building that, you know, camaraderie off the field, it, that is another um, thing to watch because, you know, that I figured he would say somebody down the road or somebody uh, county mm-hmm. over, but he says somebody across the country in, in Breland. So I, I think those three guys are, uh, you know, kind of a good starting point. We'll wait and see on, um, you know, see how Scott's visit goes. But I, I do, I do think uh, Georgia sits, you know, in a pretty good position with those two. Andy Stowe asked, are there any offensive line recruits at Georgia Atlanta that hasn't been real on the radar other than Poe and Harrison that were mentioned? So, of course, Marcus Harrison is a big guy, I think six foot seven, three upwards of 330 pounds. I mean, you're six foot seven or six foot eight. He's massive. Uh, a guy that comes in from the New York area. Georgia's kind of got in on that one recently. They really like him, or of course, they wouldn't have brought him in for an official visit. Of course, we've seen what's like to. Uh, what there is to like about Casey Poe, not only his size, but also his demeanor off the field. I think some names that you need to look at, guys, Marcus Easley, who's coming in uh, for June 2nd through 4th. He just doesn't get talked about a lot, but he's from the Illinois area up there in Chicago and uh, six foot seven, three, 300 you know, pounds. I mean, a big, big guy over there. Ethan Calloway from uh, Mooresville, North Carolina. So I think those are two uh, names that, that you really need need to to look at a lot jed is there anybody else that comes to mind on that offensive line yeah you know there's there's the guys like um fletcher westfall is one who who doesn't get talked about a, a ton um he'll i believe is taking an official visit this summer a guy like william satterwhite from ohio who georgia offered don't believe he's got an official visit set but he put a top group out and georgia was in it so that could be one where georgia's maybe positioned to make a move maybe if he gets back on campus but um, and Jordan Seaton, like I, I know he's a top guy, but I feel like yeah. he doesn't come up as lot uh, as much as of late. But he's a guy, of course, Georgia's right in there on. I think his process 
is it might go a little farther into the fall maybe than some of these other guys, but he's a guy that Georgia is, um, is of course, pursuing really intently. Yeah, a lot of people asking on here, we had a couple of different times asked, we'll, we'll just cover it all at once. Do, do, is it our opinion that Georgia, this could be the greatest class that Georgia's ever ever signed? Trent, it's going to be hard to hard to beat that 2018 20, and 2019 classes just from the total impact. But having said that, with having two – highly ranked, highly coveted quarterbacks in the class, that certainly puts you in a unique position in terms of a class ranking standpoint and where it could finish, especially with the confidence that gives receivers and tight ends and even like Casey Post said, offensive linemen. So I think maybe even that running back position and how high some of those guys that Georgia end up finishing with, as you alluded to earlier, could end up end up deciding how – highly ranked this class is because we know the defense is going to be highly, highly ranked on that side of the ball. Yeah. I kind of mentioned earlier, I think I I thought a lot of it depending on Dylan Raul's ultimate decision and with with him being in the fold now, if you can land uh, a Wingo or a Jeremiah Smith or even both, um, you you could, I think that's going to be the key of, of having, you know, know, that uh, being able to to get up there with that 2017 class, because that was a special class, but uh, you know, Landing one or, one or two of those guys, you know, have K.J. Bolden being able to get his commitment if George is able to. Uh, I think those are some guys that to watch for to, to, to might put the, put the icing on the cake with this class. No doubt. Uh, Chauncey Bowens uh, is a guy that we haven't talked about in terms of a, a lot. I mean, it, we've talked about him plenty here in the past, but here recently, but he is a running back that's committed to Florida. And I'm telling you, I think that he's going to end up being one of the top running backs in the class. It, it doesn't matter which recruiting service, quote unquote, service you're you're looking at. I think he's really, really good. And he's George is getting him on campus, Jed, according to John Garcia. And by the way, guys, John Garcia is a huge addition to rivals on the national level and what we're doing great contacts in florida in the southeast he's going to bring a lot so another reason to be subscribed to uga sports is because you get access to the to the content that john garcia is going to post on the vault for us but he told us about chauncey bowens and there's there's Flor- there's the, the florida outlet uh, john garcia uh, stuff we're hearing all indicates that del mcgee is right in the thick of this and and it's He's got a good shot once he gets on campus of kind of kind of tightening things up to try to get that flip to happen there, Jed. Yeah, and Bowens is a guy – Kirby visited his school in January, and then he, he visited Athens or maybe vice versa. And at the time, there was a lot of chatter about him maybe flipping, and then it kind of died out for a while, and, and the, the, the talking point became, okay, well, if Georgia gets him back on campus, if they get him back on campus, and then boom, out of nowhere, he drops the – official visit announcement yesterday. So, um, yeah, that's going to be – it's a big weekend. It's – there's names. Malachi Tolliver will be in town. So, Kobe White, as he told us earlier, will be in town. Um, Nitro Tuggle, Edric Houston, Chauncey Bowens, as we just talked about, Mike Matthews. So, that's going to be a huge one. And he's – it's – when you look at running back, it's Bowens. There's uh, Jared Gibson, although I, I think George is looking up at a couple others – in the uh, Gibson recruitment, and then there's Christian Clark, Nate, and Nate Frazier are, are the guys. And, and Taylor Tatum, George is staying involved there as well. So I think the second and or third running back is, is going to come from that pool of four or five guys. It's just a matter of who – not necessarily Georgia turns up the heat on, but who are they able to really uh, close with through all these official visits through the summer and into the fall. And, Trent, the reason I tied that in is because you were talking about where they finish and all that kind of stuff. I think Chauncey Bowens is my, – my point is I think Chauncey Bowens, he's ranked 218th right now nationally. I think before it's all said and done, he's upwards inside the 150 before this is, is, is over with in the, in the final rankings. And, of course, we know Jed controls that, so Jed is going to rank him higher. Yeah. yeah I, I, it's all up to Jed, no, I think. That's incentive to flip. You know, if you flip – I'm going to rank you higher. So uh, that should that should be on the front page of, of the UGA sports site. If you want to get ranked higher, commit to Georgia. But um, but yeah, as you know, as, as you were want saying, the Jed bump, you got yeah. to get the skip. That's, that's uh, yeah. Well, I'm going to need to file a trademark that pretty soon. So 
Mr. Grant, go ahead. Sorry. We're... I don't think anybody else is going to take that trademark from you, Jed. But, um, yeah, I think you could see him, you know, make a big jump, maybe even to the top 100, um, maybe a top five running back in the class uh, at, at the end of the day. But, yeah, that, you know, that, that would be a big boost for this class ranking. I think you could see several other commits um, get, get boost, um, one being Ron Puglisi, uh getting a boost as well. So, yeah. I think Georgia's class is going to be really, really good. Will it will it land seven five stars like it did um, back in I think of seventeen? I I don't know if it'll get to the seven five star mark, but I think uh, the class overall, from a hit and need standpoint, and just from the overall talent standpoint, uh, bringing in will be right up there with two thousand seventeen. It speaking of uh, great, this has been a great show. We really appreciate everybody tuning in. We've got a ton of people in here. Hit that thumbs up. Hit that like button. It's totally free. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Make sure you're on the vault. More stuff is coming day after day, and it's not going to stop until we get to December. And then after that, we'll be full speed into the class of 2025. So, And then there's already Georgia working on some big stuff in 2025. So recruiting never stops and we are going to have you covered here on UGA sports.com for Jed May and Trent Smallwood. I am Blaine Gilmer. Like I said, like, subscribe, turn on notifications. We'll catch you guys next Monday night for recruiting. Coach Donnan will be live tomorrow uh, with, with Dane, I believe. And then we'll have myself, TK, and Noshawn on Thursday night this week. Got something going on Wednesday, so we'll be Thursday night. Lots of great content. Check us out on ugasports.com. Catch you guys later.